I can start. All right, so my name's Elio Designies, um, and I'll just give you a brief background on me. Uh, so that's my professional picture. I like to uh, work hard, play hard. Actually, three days after that pitch, I was diagnosed with pneumonia, so I take it a bit too far sometimes. Um, the reason I've got two unpronounceable names is because I've got a Greek background, but I grew up, was born and raised in Sydney, and now I live in San Francisco. Um, I've done a half dozen entrepreneurial community type things in my life, but it's these three that I've kind of generated some attention. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about Silicon Beach and Startup Bus. Um, but quickly, my background, I did a Bachelor of Commerce at the University of Sydney, uh, did a graduate diploma at the Institute of Chartered Accountants, worked at PricewaterhouseCoopers for four years, initially as an auditor, and then I rolled out a cultural change program with social media technologies. And for the last two years, I've been living in Silicon Valley, uh, working at a search engine startup. It's the biggest search engine you've probably ever heard of, Vast.com. And as of Wednesday this week, I'm actually starting a new job working at Charles River Ventures, which is a top-tier venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. Um, <laughs> so they're the first investor in Twitter, uh, the main investor in Yammer, the main investor in Millennial Media, which is the third biggest mobile ad network after Apple and Google. My job is to manage the next big startup like Massive Health and Learn Boost and another 50 like them. Um, but the reason I'm here is to talk to you about Silicon Beach. Um, and Silicon Beach was something that I started a few years ago, and it's essentially a brand, a brand that represents a bunch of different initiatives with the, with the sole goal of sort of unifying people and advancing sort of the Aussie startup technology industry as an industry. And uh, it's a bit like the, the Virgin brand, where it represents a bunch of different things, except without the billion dollars and the tight clothing. <laughs> uh, the things that we do, uh, the one thing I started with, um, for example, my friend Mick, who was here in Aragon, who's sitting over there, was a weekly drinks every Friday. There was nothing really that existed three years ago that really had, on a permanent basis, getting people together. And so for the first year, we consistently just attended the same bar and told people we're always going to be there. And after a while, it started becoming a bit of an institution that three years on, you can always attend the Grace Hotel at 6pm and there's always going to be 25 to 50 people that you can meet there in the startup community that you can bounce ideas off and talk to. And actually, that's where I met Mike a few years ago when he moved over from New Zealand to start his biz business. Um, another thing that I did is create the Silicon Beach mailing list, which now has about 1,300 people on it from around Australia. And basically everyone talks a lot um, and shares ideas, talks about government policy, recommendations on good startup accountants, um, and things that can really drive the industry forward. And uh, another thing that I've been doing with it is, or have done, is a podcast with Bronwyn, who's sitting next to Mick, if you see him later, where we would interview... Um, uh, really impressive, successful entrepreneurs in Australia, uh, like Mike Cannon-Brooks, who's on his way to uh, create Australia's first billion-dollar uh, software company. And I, the thing probably I'm most proud about Silicon Beach is the advocacy I did to the government. First, uh, a letter to all the senators uh, uh, complaining that the proposed filtration of the internet was bad for our country and getting a reaction out of the Greens and the independent senators and helping generate the media awareness so that the, me the mass media has absolutely uh, caned the government and it's become a political hot potato. And following that, I actually got asked by the government to write a proposal document on uh, things that the government can do to drive the industry forward here. And I, it's a paper called the Lifeguard Paper that you can, uh, if you visit the website, you'll see. Um, more recently, I've done Startup Bus. And uh, that was actually something on my farewell drinks at Silicon Beach in July 2009. I joked, why don't we try and launch a business by the time we get off a bus on a road trip? I, uh, I moved to America and I was really busy and then it was a month out from when I was going to do it in March and so I just put this uh, image up and I started putting some feelers out uh, to try and raise sponsorship because I had like 500 bucks in my bank account so I was no I was going to be able to fund it and if I could get 12 crazy people to do it. The next thing I know, one of the biggest tech publications in the industry, TechCrunch, which has like 5 million subscribers, wrote about it. And so I, had, I, was, I went from an image on a website to having to do it, otherwise my whole credibility was on the line. <laughs> and um, it's a lot harder finding a bus that with Wi-Fi power and sponsors for something like this. So I, I worked it out, um, and it was a success. Uh, 25 people ended up doing it, went from San Francisco to Austin, launched six different businesses. Um, but the real value out of it was the, sort of the community and the rapport that they built over it. And it made me realise there's something in this as a way of sort of developing people and developing the entrepreneurial capacity. So this year I did it again, and instead of one bus I thought, what's bigger than that? And I said six buses. So I got a bus from San Francisco, Silicon Valley, uh, Chicago, Cleveland, New York, Miami, um, I think that's six, yeah. and. Uh, uh, raised about $150,000 to cover the cost, 
and uh, it became a media sensation. We had CNN waiting on the other end for them. 38 businesses were created and they were actually interviewed at this conference, South by Southwest, as if they were real startups, even though they didn't exist five days earlier. <laughs> and uh, more impressive, though, was just seeing the impact it had on these people. Um, from the people that were on the bus last year, uh, some of them have gone on to start other businesses, like one guy raised a million dollars through Opsy. Another guy actually got his company acquired by Facebook. So what Startup Bus is is really a way of developing people, giving them validation, helping them build their network, helping them give com uh, confidence in their skills and things that they didn't realise they had, and really uh, making them realise that they really belong in the startup world. And that's an example of the type of impact it had on people. This guy actually got a tattoo on his wrist. <laughs> but um, it, it's sort of, it's like I've built a cult. Startup Bus. Um, thank you.